I'm back y'all. So wanted to cover a couple of things in this video. First, I have an idea for an all-in-one starter kit. And uh, this is still in the, I just had the epiphany, so my brain is not quite all there yet. But also I wanted to talk about still air boxes and my bulk pasteurizer. So number one, the bulk pasteurizer. I got a bunch of questions about how you make the holes, what the setup is. So here's a shrunken down version. This is your familiar 64 gallon Sterilite tote, right? It is a plastic tote. It withstands heat up to 160 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, just fine. You ain't gotta worry about that. Um, and here, what you can see, if I get nice and close and down here on the ground, is I cut a half inch hole and then I took a regular PVC pipe fitting, punched that or screwed that all the way through. And this allows the power steamer, the power steamer right here, to actually kick me back my hose. This intake or hose uh, for a washing machine. Boom, right there. See? Boop. So then the steamer is plugged into that Inkbird temperature controller. You can use any temperature controller. You can do pulsing on and off uh, regardless. All you need to do is fill this tote with steam that is at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I prefer 170 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Uh, I had my uh, cook yesterday. I had that set at, or it maxed out at 184 degrees. Um, cool. That all being said, uh, for the big tote, this is what I did. So down here, I'll point at each thing. You can see I've got the pipe fittings down here. They're getting kind of rusty. No one really cares. This pipe fitting, half inch hole, plunged through. You can see there's the other side of the fitting, right there. Fitting goes through, punches down. Then I have a step down. I've got a three quarter inch to half inch step down to PEX tubing. So this PEX tubing is heat proof, right? So this stuff is not gonna melt under high heat. So the steam comes into these, gets pushed here, and then a whole bunch of hot mess comes out here. Now, if I really wanted to make this a lot more efficient, this would be a closed loop, but I don't really care. So, as you can see, I've just got a wire rack in here sitting on top of some plastic bins. These plastic bins did not get warped because of heat. They got warped because of the weight. And that's why I have those in there. Otherwise, I'd be using like bricks or something else. It doesn't really matter. So, there you have it. The pasteurizer is dirt simple to build. You can build it out of a 64 gallon tote. So much easier than messing with a pressure cooker, y'all. Come with me. The power steamer is $50. This tote, what, 10? Pipe fittings and the hose, another 10. So maybe 60, 70 bucks, give or take. And you've got a top of the line pasteurizer. Cool. Anyway, so next, let's talk about um, still air boxes. So one of the things that I build and sell, and I've talked a lot about are laminar flow hoods. Now laminar flow hoods are flow hoods that blow a sterile column of air down and make sure that everything in front of that column of air is sterile, right? Allows you to do a lot of like crazy biology work. Well, there's a different way of doing this y'all. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. In fact, let's go back and let's say that 64 quart um, Sterilite tote was 10 bucks. 
Here's how you can do sterile work for $10. This. This is a 64 gallon <laughs> Sterilite, <laughs> 64 quart. Um, Sterilite, you can see. Do, do, do. Now it's right side up. Flip it over. And all I did was, you've probably seen me do this before, I burnt these holes, I melted these holes in with pie cutters, with pie, pan, uh, pie rounds. And there you go. Now, what the point of this is, now this is not a glove box. Hey, you, you can make it into a glove box, but the entire point of the still air box is that there is air exchange. The air, when you're wearing a glove and you put your hand in and you pull your hand out, there is fresh air exchange right? But you're pulling that air out. You don't want to seal the holes, right? That sort of defeats um, the purpose. You need some airflow and you don't want fans blowing or anything else like that. The goal is to have no contamination in this space. So after I punch these two holes and I'm wearing gloves, then what I would do is I would take isopropyl alcohol, spray it all over the inside, and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Then you have a completely sterile environment. Wear gloves, wash your hands, you're done. And so you can do agar work. Uh, you can do uh, inoculations and everything else. Uh, if your tubs are small enough, you can actually um, inoculate grains uh, and substrate. Easy peasy. Now, the final topic, the all-in-one grow kit. What I'm thinking is I can make these. So you would get a still air box with gloves and a mask and a little thing of ISO, right? And you would get a monotub with some custom air filters. Now this monotub you can use to grow some of the best oyster mushrooms, right? Because this acts as a humidification dome. These pore tapes keep out um, any contamination, anything else like that. I'd like to get real filters. But the point is, is that you put the um, fruiting block inside of this. It keeps it nice, humid. You don't have to mist it. You don't have to do anything else. It basically, it automates the fruiting of your mushrooms. And uh, you can fit a three pound block of that I sell inside of that. So what you could, what I could do is sell, you know, still air box with gloves, isopropyl mask, plus the mono tub with a liner and probably a small thing of perlite and um, maybe some agar plates from Mike, uh, Mike Tyson and maybe a pink oyster or some other oyster culture and uh, just do all of that all in one shift to the, your doorstep. What do you think? Anyways, let me know in the comments. Peace.